So, hello and welcome to some more Anbanar multiplayer. Um, we're gonna be getting in real soon. We're just waiting for everyone to join in. I'm playing as Burr Sartansis, which is a, a, a nation ruled by elves with a majority human population. And we are kind of a breakaway from an old empire called the Phoenix Empire. And we're gonna be trying to form the Phoenix Empire again. Um, and there's like 30 people here with me, uh, which is absolutely mad. Uh, and I think if I add pl human players to this, yeah, it's, my outliner is kind of useless. <laughs> so we're going to leave that off. Um, yeah, we're going to have a, like a couple of minutes pause while we set this up. Uh, rivals will go with, uh, Elisna, which is this nation to the south. They're another elven nation. Uh, Dartaxigurdum is a human rebellion against my nation, so we're gonna be, uh, we're gonna be taking that land back for sure. We've got Harpyland, which is literally harpies, and we've got Zoka, which is some gnolls down in the south. Uh, we're gonna pop Harpylen in there. I think I want to ally with Varamhar. And I might want to ally with Erlium as well, those are other elven... Uh, ruled nations. Taxation policy. Uh, do I want an extra 96 crowns or 2,500 manpower? Let's go with the manpower. And that's going to be for the next 20 years. It's going to be lovely. Um, advisors. We don't want any advisors. Uh, we're going to turn both of those off. We're forming the Phoenix Empire is going to be absolutely dope. We need 100 provinces in Bulwar. Uh, which is, like, this whole region here. Uh, and then any vassals that we have, we can inherit them for two Diplo points each, which is cheap as hell, like, super-duper cheap. Uh, and so that's exactly what I'm going to plan on do, uh, doing. Uh, we'll be getting some of those in a moment, but I think we are probably good to unpause. Let's go. We're going to do speed one for a month, and then we're going to go faster after that. So, we've got a religious incident pretty much immediately, which puts us into a disaster called the Shadow on the Sun. We immediately have many, many issues, which is painful. The past few decades have taken a heavy toll on the Sun Elves states in Bahar. We've been plagued with famine and infighting, then goblins from the mountains, heresy and rebellion. It is not only destroying the land, it is destroying the humans' trust in us. How could Suriel's chosen not have stopped this? Voices cry, if far and few between. They have been too busy fighting each other for claims and wealth. They ignore our suffering. We realize now that our infighting was foolish in the face of the disasters happening around us. Our brash confidence has nearly proven our undoing. This cannot continue. The people must have absolute faith in us so that we might lead them to Suriel's light. We will have to find ways to counteract the atrocities of these past decades of war and hunger, such that the light shines on Bahara's bright future ahead, and not its gloomy past. Hopefully, we're going to get through this. It's going to be painful. There's a few things that we're going to have to do to uh, avert or get through this disaster, and uh, we'll find that out in just a moment. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually really nervous about this start. It's not the easiest of starts because Dartax here, my main rival and who I will need to take land off to avoid this uh, big painful disaster, uh, their ideas at the start is 10% morale and 10% infantry combat ability. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a whole thing. That's a whole thing that we're going to have to deal with. Hopefully we can get a good leader as well. We're going to need one. Kalisander, let's go. Fingers crossed. Three shock. You know what? I'll take three shock. Three shock is not terrible. And here it is. The Queen's speech. The plan is clear. Our Queen will make a speech to the people, with couriers to send the message to all corners of our nation. She will promise to improve the lives of the people and ensure their safety, as is her duty as one of Suriel's chosen. The people gaze up in wonder, but also in agitation. 
things getting very bad in Bulwa, and they need something to grasp onto in hope. Dar taxes, unquelled rebellion has caused many with little reason to question their faith in us to stir up and rise with thoughts of the old ways and the human-run kingdoms that saw the Age of Monsters come. We've even heard whispers of vile heresy, that we are usurpers and must be removed by any means necessary. Our administration is woefully unequipped to handle this dissent, and the more the people are mishandled by crude actions, the more of them join these causes. Beyond our borders, the monsters press ever closer, raids striking ever further. Our military has suffered loss after loss, and the people fear that soon it will not be the reasonable Sun Elves that they rebel against, but the demon-worshipping gnolls, or the man-stealing harpies, or the savage goblins from the mountains. The Queen will make a pledge to the people to end this instability and push back the invaders. All we need now is to figure out where to start, and how to go about all this. We need to restore order in the realm within the next 10 years. And we're going to see what we need to do for that. We need to appease our vassals, uh, enable the grievance system, reform the administration, reform the army, and then we can proclaim the pledge fulfilled. Uh, we need 66 points. We've currently got 15. So I think first things first, we're going to reform the army and we're going to do it fast. If we are to uphold our promise and drive back the monsters, then we're going to need to reform our armies. They have not been nearly effective enough against the Nolish incursions and Harpy raids. Our tactics have stagnated and become predictable over the past several centuries. Our army's numbers are beginning to dwindle as more and more elves die in battle with few to replace them. And our training standards are lax. If we are to make do with what we have, then let us make certain that what we have will always be enough. Because... I need the army to be very good. Because if they're if the army is not good, uh we we might even lose to Dartax, which would really, really suck. So it would be nice as well if I can get Varamaha to help me in this war, but I'm not sure how likely that is going to be. I'd love another unit, but I don't think we're going to be able to get it or afford it. You've allied with Rayuel, which do be the big suck. So we're going to recruit an admiral. He's not bad. We're going to protect trade in this region, and Rayuel is this nation here. So if they try and land troops over here, hopefully we're going to be able to stop them. Losing money now, which is also pretty sucky. Uh, is my vassal disloyal right now? He is. Okay, if we appease my vassal then. Our human vassals must be appeased if we are to count on their support in stabilizing the nation. At the moment, we demand levies and attacks from them in exchange for our direct protection. Perhaps we should ease one of these burdens, or perhaps it would be better to simply remind them that we are Surreal's chosen, and hope they understand that we can direct these resources better than they can. We will lower his taxes and our tactics have been passed down for several centuries now ever since the days of Jahur's phoenix legions however our armies are not identical to those legions and the times and technologies of war have changed in the past 300 years new tactics will mean a fresh perspective on battles and hopefully in an effective one that will surprise our enemies we have three promising options. The old guard in our military say that defensive tactics would suit the terrain of our lands the best. Let the monsters shatter against our walls of shields. The vanguard believes that to beat the monsters you must be faster than them. They propose reordering and training our armies to be deployable anywhere at a moment's notice in smaller, better trained groups. The last option is to rely on sheer volume of bodies on the field. With the humans rushing in a mass assault on the enemy, they'll be too busy defending against those numbers to react to our more skilled elven troops coming in from the flanks. Uh, here I want siege ability. And we're going to lower your levy as well. And then start a propaganda campaign in Gelkalis, my vassal. 
Queen Celadora I wants you to give your best efforts to Surreal and his chosen people. Only by working together and putting forth your best efforts in the endeavors of the chosen can we hope to banish the darkness and bask in his light. So, you're now loyal and you will help me against my nemesis here. These humans of Dirtex and Sarsis, or whatever they're called. Uh, let's go with a take core on Tremu and Cost. Raywill will join. Faramha will not, unfortunately. We don't have enough favors. That shouldn't be a problem. If I can bait this army into either this mountain fort or this wood fort, uh, we should be in a good stead. That admiral's pretty dope, so if he does try and land here, we should be able to meet him. Uh, Alliance from Keterata, I will take that. He's currently beating up on Brutk. Good for him. Is this AI just doing nothing? How about we just try and take these woods from him then? Because I don't want to try and start sieging this because it's a bloody mountain fort. We've got no siege either. Alright, finally he's on the move. That's good. That is good. Either way, we siege this, and hopefully you've gone to this fort. We'll hit you in the fort, kill your armies, everything will be chill and good. Hopefully. I think that's exactly what he's doing as well. Uh, right, is there anything else that I can do? We're losing a duck at a month. Hopefully sieging this is going to help. Eh, it did help. I could even get myself some more uh, land as well. Greetings, Queen Celadora. The Gold Wars of Vocal Ghoul and wish you success in quelling your recent rebellion. Should you come in need of funds, don't hesitate to contact us. Our Golden Gate welcomes all. Ah, oh, diddums, I have dwarven friends. Friends, it's a relative term. They're, you know, they're, they're more... It's a bank. We'll see what we can do. Wild. Alright, so if I go to Magae Tenma, the only place that this Dartax can go after here is to my fort. And I'm, I'm, I'm not going to attack him in the mountains, of course. But I will absolutely make an attempt on going down here. Alright, so, we've got the siege going here. Three. Oh. No, I'll put it back down again. Chaos! <laughs> Mad shit. Okay, I'm going to go stop Manning from going insane. Sounds like a necessary plan. Is he just going to sit there and wait? I'm kind of okay with that. It'd be nice if we could get some access through Harpy Lend, but definitely not going to happen. Actually, if I sit here, I'm just going to take attrition. I can also take his money, though. Not much of it. See what happens if I go onto this mountain force, what he's going to do. Because he still has fewer troops, so I don't know. He might be trying to fight Geld Kalis, though. That will be my guess. I could just chill and wait for him. Wait for him to do something. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move to Formaraz. Seems like a good idea. Then if I need to, I can go and help out Akaluak. My stuff's going to get the devastation down really quickly because it's right next to that fort. So that's not a problem. Um, right, reforming the troops. There's what I want. The composition of our armies has, like our tactics, been a sure and unchanging thing for centuries. 
but it's time we give them a second look. Our old god believes that cavalry is still the way to go. A bright and shining sun elven cavalry charge can turn the tide of even the gloomiest of battles. Our vanguard believes that their format of smaller, specialized, and highly mobile squadrons could serve in all parts of the army, potentially giving us some very effective infantry. Then again, we could also just rely on stacking more and more humans into the front lines. I want infantry combat ability plus 10%. Fantastic. He's moving into Grey Sheep. Uh huh. Still no access for uh, going through Harpy Land, so I can't go to Garlas Kettle, unfortunately. But that's fine. Are you going to keep that boat out there so I can kill it, or are you going to run away? find out. Rajnahaga is a player, now considered a great power. I don't know where they are, but they're they're over there being all swollen stuff. Uh the fur oh no. Keterata is also a great power. Oh whoa 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 Oh shit I forgot that fort's stopping me moving. That's not good. Oh, my armies are not going to be fast enough to get there. Oh, that sucks. And it was a stack wipe as well. That sucked. Maybe I just try and siege myself. He's not going to he's not going to have the bravery to fight my entire army, I don't think. He might try and siege my province, but there's only a, a little fort here. These ones are big boy forts. So we should be okay, hopefully. Uh, Kara is doing well. Managed to get his big war going on. Yeah, he's going to the fort. Um, well, I'm going to win that siege race because he can't actually siege. Which is nice. Oh, early wall breach, you beauty. Absolute beauty. Also, I really should be doing something along the lines of that. And curry favors from you. And maybe improve relations with Erlium. Yeah, seems like a good idea. Yeah, early wall breach is actually dope, though. You are increasing the devastation, but you're not going to actually be able to do anything of note, so I'm okay with that for now. What I could do, actually, is I could drop four units there, the rest move here. The only place you can't go here, the only way, place you can go back is to Tremor and Cost. So, yeah, come at me if you dare. Get one infantry to go over here as well. Wait. Oh, I need four units for that? How do I need four units for that? Old Sun Cult gives plus 40%. That's precisely why. Fair enough, then. Yeah, he won't take it this battle. I don't think. He does still he does now actually have the amount of troops needed, but should still be fine. I just need to take the loot from here so I don't go into debt. What I can do actually. Verko Gulan, that is you. There we go. Wait, what was that? Who have you declared war on now? Nalathair. Oh, you're allied with Ebothil as well. And you're at war with Norlakaz. Nice. And we've got Elisna versus Erlium as well. Silver Forge declared war on Benon. Okay. Reforming the training. 
Our training regimens were designed long ago with the intent that the elves going through them would have years to perfect the drills and exercises, and rely on them for centuries. This is simply not the case anymore, and results in a very poor standard of quality amongst our human contingents. We must change these training methods and we already have a few options from our advisors. We could rely on a quicker training program to get troops into the field, while letting our officers train much longer to ensure their skill. We could follow the Vanguard's method and train officers and soldiers together in small groups so they act in harmony. Or we could just reform the methods by which we train our human regiments and ensure that when they are in the field, they won't die quite as quickly. I want shock and discipline. That seems good. Quite, yes. 35% on you, that's going to happen soon enough. Why are you taking attrition? You're only one person. How is the supply this low? This should not be the case. Definitely get taken that siege ability. Yeah, why is your supply limit zero? It's not. Why were you taking attrition? No idea. Fort still hasn't fallen. I wish I had a, a siege guy. As well, if we take a fight here, like we siege that and we move away, this guy is absolutely going to try and retake his fort or his, his capital. Then we just hit them. Which seems pretty reasonable to me. Come on, 49%. Oh, that's why we're staying there. Alone, damn it. We'll take money from him when we finish this war, so it's going to go okay. You feel like I'm going to get run into conflict with Ket pretty quickly? Well, myself and Ket are currently allied, and I am okay with staying that way as long as he's okay with staying out of Bulisar. Oh, sorry, Bulwa. Bulwa. Bulisar is over here. I don't really care if he goes over there. Oh, sick! Verkagula! Oh, the actual legendariness. I like it. You're going to disease outbreak. Get wrecked. Aha! I would so enjoy some military access here. Yes, and he's going up to his capital now as well. We hope our gracious gift reaches you well. In return, we merely ask that you never step foot in Serpent's Bind, of course, pay back at your own convenience. Uh, that's not a problem by me. Uh, that's helpful. Yeah. I'll go help you with that. You actually don't need that many troops. I'm going to give you 2,000 troops to help with the siege. You can go here. And sure, if you want to just sit on there, that's fine by me. Still no siege there. All right. Wait until you're locked and we're going to go and fight you. Pearl's Edge declared war on Netcliff. No. No. No, we're too slow. I'm going to have to fight you in the Highlands. Otherwise, we get a little bit boned here. I do not want to take a defensive mountain fight with those kind of numbers against me. Oh, my God. Oh, wait, no, no, we're good, we're good. We just had a terrible first roll, and now and now the numbers are paying off. Yeah, the victory is ours. We didn't actually lose nearly as many as I thought we were. Oh, and he's only retreating to his capital. Oh, he's wrecked. 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 Right, now, unfortunately, that's probably going to mean Harpy Len will attack, I assume. Oh, there's no claim yet. Okay, I thought they had a claim. Oh, they'll have Monstrous Conquest, though. Uh, let's pay off that loan. We have completed all the reforms we can think of, and hopefully our armies will perform better than ever. Queen Celadora I is reviewing the troops with her court in the celebratory military parade, and they're inspiring strength in all who see them, in their shining armor. Army reforms have completed. Morale of armies plus 10%. Fantastic. 
truce with Harpy Land has ended as well. Is there any way I'm going to be able to get to Garlis at this, this place? Well. I'm going to need an extra thousand troops to go over to that fort. Good enough. Military access is just never going to be achieved there at all. Enemy has no army equals free loot. Yes and no, because while, yeah, I'd be able to loot the place really successfully, um, this will be my land. So more devastation isn't good. Are you at war with anyone? No. Very worried about this. could always declare war on them ourselves. Is that a good idea? We could get Varamhar to help. Oh, I don't know. How about we just go blockade you for a little moment? Just want to see what you've got going on. Seven thousand troops. 12 boats. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, we just have to wait for the siege now. Um, I'm thinking we call you, and I'm going to start... I should have started a long time ago, but I'm going to start Spy Network on Dartax, as that will eventually start speeding up the siege. Wait, if I... If I move off this, then this guy's gonna come and be a bastard. But that's fine. Yeah, I think maybe another next conquest might be Marblehead. They're allied with Landshark, which is, I think, this guy, yeah. And Mountain Hugger, which is this guy. I still think it's a good idea. Mission-wise, I need two stab and two allies with a high opinion of me. End the rebellion, I need to go and kill Dartax, naturally. Reclaim the north is going after Marblehead. So we've got, we've got some things to do. Strengthen the heartland, I need a lot of buildings we can't afford yet. Oh man, only one siege progress. I have no siege leader. Uh, actually, you know what I can do, which is a little bit, I know it feels like an exploit, I don't know if it is, but we can make our consort a military leader. This is not our ruler, this is our consort. Costs 10 prestige though, I think it's worth it, and it was, and it absolutely was. So, uh, let's give you one infantry. Go over here and apply one extra siege. Because it makes all the difference. Alright, you're going to get in there, help out. You're still making an army, but I don't think you're going to be able to do that much, hopefully. What worries me is if this 7,000 gets involved. We'd be able to beat it with this 10,000, but... It's just a pain that I don't want to have to deal with. Ooh, it looks like Nolika is actually... Ooh. That's not good. That's not good at all. Where's... Where's your capital? Down there, okay. I mean, the Knolls have really bad army. Okay, there's a there's a whole army down here doing work, so that should be fine then. And it's got a proper fort as well. So for them to get down here, they'd have to go through Elisna. I really don't care about that one. Still only 3,000 for you. That's good. Uh, let us reform the administration while we're waiting here. With our Queen's promise made, we must immediately begin making good on it and stabilizing Bursantarsis. There are two major areas we can focus on. 
First is the fact that many in our administration have become rather corrupt, money leaking out from dozens of holes and causing our work to stagnate. Fixing this would promote good practices, less extortion of humans, and more issues resolved without the need for our hand in the matter. Additionally, it would ensure every Sun Elf lives up to their responsibilities as the Chosen of Surreal. The other option is to open new levels of administration and fill the positions with worthy human subjects. This would give them a voice, lower down the chain, and hopefully reduce the negative impacts of any corruption that trickles down that far. However, doing so will certainly anger our kin, who are used to their patronage appointments. We dare not attempt to do both at once, given our bureaucracy's rustiness and our strained resources, but hopefully focusing our efforts on one of them will be enough to solve the problems. And we will crack down on corrupt elven officials, uh, because it's, we need to, clearly. So appeasing your vassals doesn't have anything there yet, that's fine. At the moment, we have 25 points in the pledge. We've gone through three years. So, taking this is going to be another 25 points. Uh, stabbing up one time is going to help. Work joshing going down is going to help. No deficit at full army maintenance, so I need more money. Um, and then taking advisors, however taking advisors is not really feasible when this makes advisors cost 250% extra. So we're not going to be doing that. There is larger bonuses if you get over 100 points, but I don't know if that's possible. Well, I mean, it's probably possible, but not for me. I am not good enough to do that. Alright, come on, be lucky on a 14, please. God damn it. We almost got the bastards, though. Harpilin still hasn't declared war on anyone. That's actually very strange. They declared war on Grey Sheep. Okay, that's cool. At least it's not this guy. At least it's not Dartax. You got Mountain Hugger helping you. 28%. How long are these siege ticks anyway? 32 days. Gotcha. But yeah, the reason I don't really want to go to war with Harpilens early is because that leader they have, Burke Tallpeak with a 10 shock, is madness. It's actually madness. So I don't want anything to do with that. Hey, we got the giggity amount. At some point, uh, Varamha is going to want to go to war with Harpilen, and they can also get a leader that is just as good, so we may be able to work something out there. Now the monsters will fight the monsters, seems like a good arrangement for us. Yes, exactly. Hopefully Burke dies in this conflict. Alright, we've got all of the siege status rolls, and we're at 49%, so we just need, basically need to toss a few coins. Once this is sieged, we're probably going to be able to peace out. Or at least we move off, wait for you to go on there, kill you, siege this. Jobs are good. And thankfully, we ended this war actually pretty decent on manpower as well. It's totally possible to end this war, like, absolutely drained. Siege of Kuzak is over. Beautiful. I wonder, will you let me piece you out for everything yet? Nope. Not while he has an armory, I suspect. Are you going to go for the fort, or are you going to be really irritating? Screw it. Just attack into the highlands. We've got... Uh, Galindil Varamzweer. So we're, we're totally, totally fine. Painful battle, I'd rather not fight, but shouldn't be more than a thousand losses. Yeah. And we've got recover army move, uh, morale speed. Beautiful. Well, with that, I would argue that as soon as this is sieged, you should be piecing out, even though you've got an ally. 
We'll go and blockade Sid, aren't I? Uh, because you've got no army, so you've got no chance. Hopefully that's going to work out. Ooh, the peace between Keterata and Nolakaz. That's, that's a big chunk of land that they just take. That's really cool. Good for them. Alright. They will accept, but we've got no diplomats, naturally. Well, we'll take you away. You don't you're not needed anymore. Uh, I also want all your money, just so you're aware. You're really close to accepting. I think a couple of months' time he's gonna accept that. So let's wait for the tick. We'll see what happens. Or I could just take five ducats less. Yeah, it's fine. Fantastic. Uh, do we want to... Right, some provinces need cores. That is so expensive. Alright, but we can proclaim the pledge fulfilled. We're currently at 82 points. Can I get to 100? Is that going to be possible? If I bump up stability, that's 5. War exhaustion, that's another 5. Employed advisors. So I can get to 92. Uh, ba I basically need three advisors, but advisors cost three ducats each. And I have a, I have not got enough money. So I think... No. I think we just proclaim the pledge fulfilled. Or I could wait until actually the propaganda campaign is finished. Wait until the propaganda campaign is finished, and once it's finished, we have the mission to get it as done as well. That's true. Hmm. Do I want to end it early just because of that? Do I want to get some bonus for finishing Appease Your Vassals? I don't recall. Whatever. Fuck it. We're going to do it. We're just going to do it. It was not so long ago now that Queen the I declared to the people that she would stabilize the nation and push out the invaders. We took on an ambitious portion of our vast list of reforms and solutions, and while not every measure we tried to implement was successful, the majority were. This has resulted in a far more stable society protected by a much more able military. While the people sometimes still struggle to have their problems heard, we at least keep an ear to the ground now, and while there is still some corruption and slack within the administration and military, it's far from the stagnant pool it once was. All in all, most among the court believe that Queen Celadora has done a fine job, and the people seem to agree. The situation has certainly improved in our nation, it's fantastic, all good, all round, beautiful stuff. Mission fulfilled. End the rebellion. Missionary strength plus three percent for fifty years. Dartax's Sel Foramaz was a loyal retainer of Bursartans's for many years. Only when human discontent reached a new high during the decades of devastation did he start to rally other discontents in the army around himself. After this, he pursued an alliance with the Sebhulium, a heretic sect following the old sun cult hiding in the northern mountains. Only when he was sure of his success did he strike. His rebellion brought Bursartansis to the brink of destruction. The capital was only saved by a goblin invasion entering the country in the back of the rebel army, forcing Tartaxes to retreat and secure his positions. These days on the precipice also had a profound effect on Princess Celadora. Disappointed by her father, King Arantir I, and his failing administration, she led a palace revolt and took power herself. Her experiences would shape Bursartan Sesi policy for decades to come. These events are long past, however. Now the rebellion is crushed, and Dartaxes himself was captured by our troops. He is a symbol of our weakness and a heretic as well. There can be no future for him than death on the pyre. His followers, however, not only the humans who have risen up against our rule, but also those born under his rule, or led astray by the Sephulium, may not be completely lost. We should decide on how to deal with them. And Dartaxes, the rebel, has been captured. Uh, how about we burn him? Let's burn him. Get up to two stability as well. Fantastic. 
Uh, yeah, we're spending points early that we maybe shouldn't be, but that's a good idea. Oh. 